In our two sample hypothesis testing, uh, let's go over just a little bit deeper about our null and our alternative hypothesis. Uh, let's go ahead and start with our means. So let's do two sample means. Okay, so as we did in our introduction, we know that our null hypothesis is technically this guy, where we're doing this mu1 minus mu2 is equal to mu not 1 minus mu not 2. All right, so technically, if we think that there is some difference between two things, like we think you know some car really does cost ten thousand dollars more than another, and then we're trying to see if that happens, we can do this uh, where we can set where we think the true difference is equal to some value. So when when we do this, we usually we don't just say that there is like um, that the mu one is a specific value and mu two is a specific value. We normally say that this would be equal to like ten or something like that. Um, and so that we say that the difference between these two is a specific value. Okay, but most of the time when we're doing this, and for, for this class really, uh, we are trying to see if the, the baseline assumption is that these two groups are the same. So if we are assuming that these groups are the same, then this actually becomes this guy this mu1 minus mu2 equals 0. Because if the true difference between these two guys, if they are the same, it means that the difference between them is going to be 0. <clears throat> so typically, I like writing it in this format. This is the way that I like to write my null hypothesis. Uh, but there's another very common way that you'll see a lot. And so I want you to be able to see it as well. What we can do is we can just move this mu2 to the other side. And so you wind up getting this guy of mu1 equals mu2. So totally valid. It's just we're saying that the null hypothesis is that these two means are equal to one another. Uh, but I like this version better. And so when you see me do it in all of our examples and stuff, you'll see me put it up in this format. Uh, but you'll see it in textbooks a lot and other examples written up in this format. <clears throat> okay, and then our alternative hypothesis. Uh, it's nice because the, um, the pattern stays the same where the null hypothesis and the alternative hypothesis are identical except for the inequality. So here we'll have that mu1 <clears throat> minus mu2 and then depending on what type of test we're doing, if we're doing a one-tail or a two-tail test, we can have greater than, less than, not equal to. And once again, I'm just going to put in 0 here, because this is what we are typically going to see. Now we can, if we think that there's a specific difference between two things, we can have that. Uh, but most of the time, it's just going to be 0. Okay, so now that we've got our two sample means, let's take, a, let's take a second and we will look at our two sample proportions. <clears throat> Before we move on though, um, this hypothesis, they work for whether or not we have equal variance or if we have unequal variance. The null the, that just determines our, the testing method that we use, uh, but the hypotheses are the same uh, in both of those cases. So now let's go ahead and look at two sample proportions. All right, so in two sample proportions, our null hypothesis is going to be this guy. So it's going to be pi 1 minus pi 2 is equal to pi not 1 minus pi not 2. 
or that the true difference in proportions is equal to the hypothesized difference in proportions. Once again, most of the time we are comparing these to say that, um, that we're, we are trying to see if they are equal, that the baseline assumption is that they are equal to one another. We can do this thing again where we put the pi 2 on the other side, but I like this format, so I'm going to keep it just like this. And our alternative hypothesis is going to be pi 1 minus pi 2 greater than, less than, not equal to 0. So that's how we set up our hypotheses based upon our two different kind of types, if we're dealing with categorical data or if we're dealing with, uh, with numerical data. How we are, instead of looking at comparing to a specific value, we're now comparing these differences to see if, they, if these two groups or these two populations are in fact equal to one another, if they have equal proportions or if they have equivalent means.